All right, I got I got a special guest today, another another Coasty veteran, which is pretty cool. We we don't see many other uh, Coasty vets out there, so it's nice to see us uh, floating unicorns, as we call ourselves, right? So we got Jason here with a uh, Bad Company Barbecue. As you can see, I got all these barbecue packs you sent me over as a sample pack. Super fucking good. Jason, well, welcome to the show, man. Good to good to meet you again. Hey, thanks for having me. Appreciate the opportunity to kind of sprinkle the uh, the information. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, man. I mean, I uh, I came across you online. We got connected, and uh, I, I just thought it was amazing to meet another Coast Guard vet just in general, honestly. I run in a lot of veteran advocacy circles, and we're, we're so few and far between. It's it's always just cool to meet another Coast, honestly. Absolutely. So, that in itself is pretty neat. You were, you were an MK, right? That's correct, yep. MK, I did uh, 20 years. Thanks, nice, man. Congrats on that. How, how's that feel? It's a long oh, sentence. It great. Yeah, I'm pushing uh, nine years retired right now. So, oh man, um, that's incredible. I've been in man. other chapters for a long time. <laughs> that's sweet, man. That's cool. And you, sir, you you sent me like a long uh, laundry list of units you served at. It looked like a lot of ships. Is it was it was it mainly ships or land units or? Yeah, I, mostly cutters. I had uh, two land units uh, in my cool. career, so uh, the rest were all ships. Okay, cool. What what were the land units? Out of curiosity. Uh, I did uh, Nisu Portsmouth out of Virginia, okay. and then I uh, my final, my twilight tour was uh, out of Grand Haven. I was the RFO chief, so I did inspections okay. at small boat stations. Nice. It's kind of a nice way to end it. And I know you're yeah. you're calling right. them from uh, your RB right now, right? Is that right? Yeah, that's correct. I'm in uh, uh, Vicksburg, Mississippi right now. So Okay. Sweet, man. How, how long have you been doing the RB? Okay. We've been full-time RVing for five years, so no shit. I, I like to say I've been homeless for five years. It's it's been a blast. It's really fun. It's challenging to run a business uh, when you're doing that, but uh, yeah. we make it. That's cool, man. How how big is the RV or what kind of RV is it? It's a 41 footer fifth wheel um, with five okay. slides. So it's a large RV and we went big because we knew we were going to do it full time. And uh, nice. it's basically our house. So we didn't, uh, we didn't keep a home base. We didn't keep our house. We have no storage unit. We basically sold everything we own and just hit the road and, uh, Nice, it's almost like you're back on ship life again, then. Yeah, it is. I mean, we 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 talk about it, you know, short ties, uh, you know, getting underway, uh, tying up for the night. You know, we use terminology like that, too. So <laughs> of course my wife's used to that terminology, too. You know, she's basically in the Coast Guard for 20 years with me. So, yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's cool, man. That's awesome. So uh, um, so how's it feel being out for what do you say? 10, 10 years now or is it nine? I, I'm pushing nine years uh, retired. So, um, yeah, it's been I mean, um I don't know. I was ready to go. I was prepped, you know, prepped and, uh, you know, made some decisions and moved some things around and kind of was excited to start a new chapter. So um, Coast Guard was great. I loved it. It was a great opportunity. I had a blast and met some great people. Um, but at the end of the day, it's a job and it's one chapter and, you know, our long lives, hopefully. So um, okay. I was ready to go. That's awesome. And I guess for, for people tuning in too, what, uh, what does an MK do? So it's machinery technician. What, uh, machinery what technician. does your job comprise of? Yeah, I mean, basically uh, a jack of all trades, uh, machinery, uh, engines, air conditioning, hydraulics, uh, heating, uh, work with potable water, work with diesel fuels, uh, helicopter fuels, all kinds of different things. Uh, basically, if it makes things go, uh, we're messing with it. That's awesome. That's cool. I, I started off, I was in uh, ADing for the first uh, only six months or so over in uh, Homer, Alaska on the UGC uh, Hickory. The buoy tender mm -hmm. out there, so I had the black hole life for a little bit. Honestly, I'm I'm not mechanically inclined whatsoever. Honestly, I'm, I'm more of a cook, obviously, but like I didn't know what the fuck I was doing on there. But it was it was fun <laughs> though. It was cool to be a part of it until I yeah. went to cooking school. <laughs> yeah, so it was right. cool. Good. Tell tell us about your your business. So we started uh, the end of the year in 21, um, and it was basically kind of a culmination of different things. I was just fin finishing uh, culinary school. And one of the requirements is to do a uh, an internship at a restaurant. Um, and that required uh, being stationary for six months. And that was immediately a no-go for me because, you know, I, I'm traveling. I'm traveling full time. So, um, I you know, I had an uh, opportunity to do something alternative. And I said, why don't I start a business, do a proof of concept, do a business plan. And, uh, you know, I'll, I'll meet all the criteria that you want to meet doing this internship. But in, instead of that, I'll start a business and I'll start a mobile business that I can run on the road and um, prove to you guys that it can work. And they they bit off on it. Uh, they had no problem with it. We did it. And I didn't know if I was going to keep doing it once I proved that it could work and it could be done. But um, it's just kind of snowballed 
and uh we're having a blast still so i'm gonna keep doing it and as long as i'm having fun so i feel like that's what it's all about you know i feel like if you enjoy what you're doing while you're working it makes it so much better right i'm Absolutely. sure it, it, i mean i can taste that it shows honestly i mean you sent me some really cool uh sample packs which by the way i love i love the logo it's like a play off the old uh, gi joe logo which is pretty neat in itself i tried tried a couple uh, the bourbon soaked peach was really fucking good. Honestly, it's like almost taking a drink while you're eating a peach. And I mean, I I bet that would be really delicious on some ribs or anything else. But what's what's your favorite out of this pack? There's a ton in here. Oh, geez. They're like my children. I can't pick my favorite. But uh, <laughs> um, I can tell you the the smoked black cherry is the first one we made. And um, I started making these things uh, first off because I couldn't find anything that was sugar free and not packed with like sugar and salt. And mm -hmm. I wanted to make something that was high quality and something you could use at whoever you are and whatever you're cooking. Um, so it's, you know, geared toward barbecue is where we started, but it's really, I mean, you can use it anywhere you're preparing food. Uh, it works great in all kinds of different things. If you're a foodie, you're going to love them. That's awesome, man. I know. And just, just looking at this, honestly, I, I think the first thing that caught my eye was your, was your logo, which, which you guys can see on here. And I looked at it and I was like, this, this gotta be a vet. And I, I looked a little further and I was like, oh man, it's a Coast Guard, but even better. That's awesome. So that's nice. cool, man. So I know, you, I know you mentioned you kind of got inspired by all your different pork calls uh, and all the different cuisine you tasted. What were some of your favorite pork calls and favorite food? Oh, geez. Um, right away, right off the bat, I'm going to go Columbia. Um, it's something that nice. always sticks in my mind. We, we pulled in there while we were doing some work down in that area. And uh, mm -hmm. uh, I had a feijoada for the first time. I think I'm saying that right, but it was just amazing. And then uh, Puerto Rico, of course, um, you know, all the Puerto Rican food, uh, Mexican food. And then, you know, more so than that, um, it, it was a challenge because I would taste all these amazing foods and have all these amazing dishes. And then I would go home and I would start recreating them and trying to capture those flavors and share, you know, with my family, like, Hey, I had this amazing, whatever. And here's, you know, here's what I tried to do to make it and how's it taste. And um, that's sort of where I got the idea to, you know, sort of base the flavors on food experiences that I've had before and different regions and stuff like that. So um, that's where that came from. And then that coupled with the idea that we were going to be traveling full time. And so we, you know, we have access to all these amazing places around the country Um that are known for certain things so we'll end up you know uh, you know I, I did the miami blend I, I did a blend called miami spice and um we were actually stationed down in key west and had the food down there but then just recently we spent uh, about eight months down in florida living there and kind of traveling around um and just trying all the different uh cuisines and different you know cuban uh fusion foods and you know there's mexican there's hispanic there's everything down there all kind of culminating together and you know i if we wouldn't have had that experience, I would have known, you know, never known that there was like three or four different versions of the Cuban sandwich, you know, <laughs> uh, most people yeah. think of it and they're like, it's a Cuban, it's a Cuban. But when you get down there and you dissect things and start actually, you know, living in that culture and trying to, you know, learn about the culture, you find out there's, there's so much more to it. And it's, it's pretty amazing. Absolutely. I know uh, there's, there, you're getting me like excited to think about food food port calls like i've been on and uh me, me and the cooks used to go out and try different things too and try to bring it back to the ship and, and do our own take on it or cook it better right, right? like kind of like competitive stuff yeah. and uh oh man one of the best things we used to pull into panama city in panama a lot and they do the whole fried snapper over there just so yeah. simply like light breading a little bit of lime and oh my god it's so fucking good me and our uh uh fs2 corsina my my good buddy eddie we're probably making it for mid rats like every night for the next month. We got like a few different <laughs> cases of whole, whole red snapper and we're just frying it up every single night. Right. It's fucking awesome. It's delicious. Great. But um, that's cool, man. So, so tell me about, you, you said you went to culinary school. Where, where'd you go to culinary school at? I, I did a scoffier and I used the, uh, cool. I had a little bit of the, my GI Bill left and I, I still have a little bit to use, but I used my GI Bill and did that. And uh, they have an online program that was available. I know a lot of people scoff yeah. at that, but um, I've always been cooking. I learned to cook, you know, like a lot of people from mom. And, uh, you know, oh, I started yeah. cooking with mom and um, the Scafia kind of gave me the foundation that I didn't have. So mm -hmm. I was, you know, doing these things, doing them because I could, do, you know, looking things up online and stuff, but I was still lacking yeah, kind yeah. of the basics. And uh, that gave me kind of the basics that I needed to move forward. And uh, I'm glad I did it. It was definitely worth it. So nice. Um, That's awesome, man. I mean, uh, the GI Bill too is like, 
That's like the golden ticket right now. Did did you transfer some to your uh, dependent before you got out or anything? Is that why you just had a little time left? Just out of curiosity? I, I did not. I actually, uh, I did a business degree. I got my business oh, cool. degree uh, nice. under uh, tuition assistance. So they paid for the whole thing. That was back when they were paying Sweet. 100%. So cool. I got that done while I was active. And then I got out and uh, I was a tattoo artist in a past chapter. Okay, of the cool. So um, as I was a tattoo artist, I started pursuing art more. And so I mm -hmm. actually went to art school. And then when I decided, or when we decided that we're going to have full-time RV, I'm like, well, I can't be an oil painter on the road. So I, I switched over and started uh, doing photography. And cool. so I started working with photography. And so I used a lot of it uh, pursuing that art degree. And then once we decided, you know, that's not really what I'm going to do, um, mm -hmm. then I just say, kind of save the rest and, you know, we'll see what happens. So, um, but it's pretty sweet when you're out and they, um, the new, the, the post 9-11, I mean, they're paying mm -hmm. BH and everything too while you're going to school. So exactly uh, that's a nice little chunk as well hell yeah it's it's phenomenal man the past uh few years before i went full-time working on helmet's kitchen i worked at fordham university over in new york city mm -hmm. in manhattan in the bronx and um i work specifically with the student veteran program over there any military connected student coming out we always talked about it like our office was the bridge past the typical you know maybe week or two long caps program or like it, where it kind of they just kind of kick you out of the door right they, they teach you a few good things obviously but then you're just kind of on your own so we kind of use our office to be that that bridge extension into the taps program and you know keep a good hand on vets coming out and helping them get right. acclimated become a civilian learn the benefits everything else but i learned a lot of great things and good good gig forums good school to go to by the way too um but wow. it's a good program over there but I had a lot of good times there um that's cool man such a cool story um Man. So, all right. So you said your Black Cherry was your premier first product. How how long did it take you to figure out the ingredients and make sure everything went well? Like how, how long was your product testing for that first one? I got to imagine it took a little while. And that one went really fast. I mean, it was my first okay, one. Cool. It's a bestseller. And I think yes. I went through, I think three different versions of it. And, so, uh, you know, when I'm, when I'm trying it, I'm, um, I'll come up with the recipe, I'll put it together. Mm -hmm. And I'll go by volume. So like a tablespoon of this, a tablespoon of that, put it all together. Mm -hmm. And then I'll try it on all different foods and see how it plays off everything. I do it on, you know, all the different proteins. I try it out on even mm -hmm. eggs. I just scramble eggs and Ooh. put the seasoning on there. And that gives you a good indication of how, you you know, the seasoning itself and how it's going to taste when it's cooked. Um, mm -hmm. there's, there's a lot of things to keep in mind with just, um, and I learned this now, um, you know, as I'm going through the process, but um there's like heat tolerances, there's heat stabilities of different ingredients that you're using. So, um, you know, some of the ingredients as you heat them up, if you get super hot, the, the flavoring will fall away. And so mm -hmm. it's nice to know those kind of things so you can help people use different products that you're creating. So, but the Smoke Black Cherry is based on Traverse City, the Cherry Festival uh, in That's Michigan. Cool. And uh, I'm from Michigan originally. So everything kind of just, you know, fell in. And uh, that's where I used to go when I uh, vacation as a kid. My parents, you know, would take me to Traverse City. And then uh, when my wife and I were married, we actually honeymooned there. So it's it's always been a part of my life. And then later at my Twilight Tour, uh, when I was stationed in Grand Haven, I had to go to Traverse City, you know, I wouldn't say frequently, but a couple times mm -hmm. a year, probably. Um, so it was kind of a full circle kind of thing. So when I was thinking about the first blend I wanted to come up with, it was just kind of, it was a no-brainer. Nice. That makes a lot of sense. I know in... Uh cooking school in the Coast Guard over in Petaluma, California, where they train us for a few months. I used to always fuck around with my uh, my FS2 or FS1 at the time, our uh, cooking instructor, and I'd, I'd make a big thing of season and be like eating a spoonful and be like, hey, FS2, you mind, you mind trying this? And, you know, it's going to be a look like you wanted to smack me. But I was like, you really got to taste as you go, right? Don't you agree? Like even tasting a spoonful of seasoning, you can really get a feel for what it can go on. Absolutely. Right? And I like to actually, we do, uh, when I do pop-ups, we only do a few of them if we're invited, we don't mm -hmm. seek them out. Um, but sure. when we do pop-ups, we actually do tastings because none of the seasonings are cool. super salt forward. Uh, the only mm -hmm. one that's a salt forward blend would be the, the, um, garlic butter herb seasoned salt. And okay, yeah. that's one that's, you know, it's a salt forward because it's a seasoned salt. So you use that almost as a salt replacement, but the rest, even that one, people taste it, you know, in samples by itself. And the rest of them, though, you know, like you can, you can take a teaspoon of it. It's not gonna, you know, make you pucker too bad, or you know, it's a, uh, yeah, yeah, it's about high quality herbs and flavors and, you know, nuances like that, rather than just full of sugar and full of salt. So, yeah, I love that too. So uh, I completely agree. A lot of seasoning mixes have a lot of sugar in it, and I was like, eh, it tastes tastes good, but come on, you know, <laughs> be a little more Absolutely. creative. 
that's cool. and on the salt that. side of it you can you you, know, you can always add salt if you're you're tasting the seasonings and they're a little bit light as salt that's because i'm not filling them i mean salt and sugar are heavy so and they're cheap so let's face it i mean if you're trying to you know cut somewhere that's where you're going to go is you're going to just uh add extra salt add extra sugar and get that weight up where you need to be it and you know I, i'm not going to do that so all right, Jason, I know, too, you you have a bit of a charity mission to your business, like a lot of veteran-owned businesses do, and I, I really love to see. So if you want to talk about that a little bit. Sure, yeah. Well, I mean, being retired and, you know, being debt-free, we're kind of in a position where we're not chasing the dollar. We're kind of doing this just for fun. It's kind of a passion project because I love doing it. And so, you know, to keep motivated and keep something um, in my head moving me forward, uh, I needed a mission, and that was, uh, what if we give everything to charity? So. Uh, what me and my wife talked about and decided was that 100% of the profits are going to go to charity. And so what that means is uh, after all the expenses and everything we have, what's left is the profit. And then we turn around and uh, just get that back out. And uh, we donate to different um, charitable causes. Uh, most of what we do is through our own foundation. Um, we're trying to get the 501c3 status. Right now we're known as a feeder organization. So any any company that's done for profit, to give to charity is called a feeder organization. So that's where we fall. We don't fall under the 501c3, but what we can do is start a 501c3 and then funnel all the movie money into that. And what that does is that allows us not to pay taxes. And so all that money that we're paying in taxes now um, actually will funnel right into the charity. That's that much more money we'll be able to give to charities. So um, we do give a little um, outside of our own foundation and our own causes. We've given some to like combat vets, um wherever we're at if we're somewhere for a long time we'll donate to like the food mission um that's local and then we'll also um give to like the vfw and stuff like that um if we end up meeting up with those guys and stuff so i'm um, just trying to spread it around nice man I, I love to hear that and something that i've the more i talk to vets in the business field whatever field it may be there's always some kind of core mission to give back to the community Maybe not as much as you, 100% of your profits, but there's always something going on there where they're trying to help whatever it may be, right? And I, I think that kind of goes back to us joining up the military where we want to serve people, right? Uh, I don't Absolutely. know. What are, what are your thoughts about that? What, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, it's 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 that um, the wanting to serve and wanting to do good. Um, and that's, you know, why most of us joined in the first place anyway. But um, aside from that, when you're done uh, with the military mission, having another mission kind of keeps you going forward. Uh, keeps you in a mental place where you can focus on, you know, goals. We're mission oriented. We're goal oriented. And so when you have those things, if you can put those into your own life, you know, it makes it makes life sweet. <laughs> exactly. You have something to sweet for, you know, as, as sweet as your seasonings, <laughs> <laughs> you know, right? <laughs> that's, that's good though, man. That's cool. Um, yeah, I love to see it. Oh well, Jason, that's an incredible mission, man. I mean, that's that's great. I love to hear it. You know. Uh, the other thing was, uh, my wife just whispered it in my ear here, is that yeah, bourbon yeah. soaked peach. Um, if you're going to oh, yeah. try that out, highly, highly recommend. Uh, I don't know if you, are you like most people uh, that fry your bacon or do you do it in the oven? Oh, man. E either or, honestly. Okay. <laughs> pop, pop a pound of bacon in the oven. Mm -hmm. And uh, when it comes out and it's still sizzling, sprinkle that bourbon peach over top of it. And it's going to turn into like a candied bacon and... I'll tell you, man, that's, that's the way to do it. I'm not allowed to make bacon any other way in this house. So, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's awesome, man. I bet it'd be fucking good on some burnt ends too. Some, uh, it's some amazing on burnt too. ends. And you know, a lot of, a lot of the seasonings you can add them to um, sauces. And I always say like, we don't make sauces, we make sauces better. So nice. uh, you take barbecue sauce, you throw a little like cherry jam in there and throw some of that mm -hmm. smoked black cherry in there. And then there's your, there's your rib sauce. Uh, cool. Put the peach in with a little peach preserves into some barbecue mm -hmm. sauce there you go i mean pineapple teriyaki nice. and some soy sauce you gotta dip mm. so that's awesome another another cool thing I, I noticed about your instagram facebook you you have a lot of good recipes on there too and stuff you're making and it, it's mouth-watering to look through so, so check, <laughs> check check out his feed and look through it you get some good ideas how to use these seasonings i like i said i tasted a couple they're fucking phenomenal uh super good I, i'm gonna like i'm gonna it. cook up a storm with some of these and try out four of them where where can people watching this get them? How how they buy these? Um, everything's online. It's badcompanybarbecue.com. Uh, that has all the information. And we have seasonings. Uh, we have some merch. We have apparel. We have different accessories. We have gift cards. Um, you can get anything you need at badcompanybarbecue.com. 
And um, you follow us on Facebook and Instagram. I'm not on the talk. I'm not on the Twitter. Um, I'm just pretty much Instagram and Facebook. Um, awesome. And, and we, you know, we update everything uh, when we come out with new blends, which uh, there's a new one coming out soon. Um, you know, you just follow us and you, you'll be uh, informed on what's going on with us. That's perfect. That's great to hear. And remember, if you're, you're buying seasonings from Jason here, you're not only supporting a better known business, you're supporting a Coast Guard better known business, which is just a step above the rest. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, cool, man. Well, Jason, this has been a blast talking to another Coast you about your time in and everything about your company. I'm pumped to try out. I'm going to try out every single one of these. Uh, awesome. And, and then some, obviously. So I'm pumped to do that, too. Thanks for coming on, man. It's been a pleasure. Awesome. I appreciate you having me.